But as, as an adult, uh, I equated it to superstition. Later, looking back as a biblical believing Christian, uh, I see a lesson that was being revealed and taught in this. The lesson was that when God is speaking, the only thing that matters is listen. All other sounds and activity need to cease. Allow me to engage in a little eisegesis here, which means I'm uh, reading my own opinion into the text to support my thinking. I can see Adam and Eve's mind now being flooded with thoughts, concepts, imaginations, questions, fear, anxiety, etc., due to their exposure to the knowledge of good and evil. Now, when God comes on the scene to confront them, all the noise in their head needs to be silent so that they can hear what the Lord is saying. We live in a generation that clamors for answers, but not necessarily for truth. We want change, but not necessarily transformation. The main difference between change and transformation is that change is often a response to external forces and can be made quickly and without much effort many times. It is more of a reaction. Transformation, however, is a necessary reordering that takes time and energy and can involve a shift in both values and identity. It is more of a purpose action. It requires more personal effort. Therefore, many Christians have taken on the mentality of the Israelites as they were leaving Egypt. In the book of Exodus chapter 20, uh, the people refused Moses' invitation to draw near Mount Sinai and hear God speak. The mountain was shrouded in mist, thunder roared, and lightning flashed from its heights. The people were afraid. They've stated, why don't you go over and hear God, said the people to Moses, and then come tell us what he said. <laughs> In other words, I don't want to hear God for myself because I have a sneaking suspicion that if I do, he will ask for more than I'm willing to give. The thought pattern here is, I come to church on Sunday so the preacher can tell me what God said because it's easier to reject the preacher's voice than it is God. 